As we continue to focus on the Democrat party and all the ills that's, you know, going along, um, Democrats after the 2021 elections in Virginia was shook. They were shook because they wanted to know what was going wrong heading into the 2022 elections. And they figured out a pattern that was emerging is that men are abandoning the party in droves. Well, are we surprised by this at all? But continuing, they were saying that snippets from the Democratic Governors Association postmortem on the Virginia governor's race were made public, including reports conclusion, which read, we need to address the long-term problems that exist for Democrats with Latinos and black men. Now notice they didn't say black people, they said black men, okay? Now they say on the background from a source with knowledge of the findings of the memos, they, they said they obtained the underlying data driving this conclusion. Turns out democratic candidate Terry McAuliffe actually improved on president Joe Biden's margin among black women, uh, plus 78 for Biden compared to plus 87 for McAuliffe. But at the same time, McCullough's support among black men fell off a cliff plus 74 for Biden plus 55 for McAuliffe. And I said, this growing gender, uh, gap among blacks, they said, is also evident among Hispanics. And they found a strong 55% of Hispanic women said they will vote for Biden in 2024. And even stronger, 56% of Hispanic men said they will pull the lever for President Donald Trump. Well, see, if you understand how Hispanics think, then this is why it's a failed strategy to try to do the immigration thing because most of them are going to vote Republican. Because if you know their culture, they don't believe in all the things that Democrats are pushing culturally and just fundamentally. And actually black people don't really believe in that either, especially black men, but we will get to black men for sure. Uh, since I'm a black man myself. Now they say that 56% support among Hispanic men almost matches to 61% of white men who voted for Trump in 2020. So they asked the big question, why are men leaving the democratic party? And they said, well, it's because the entire agenda seemed to make men irrelevant and men have begun to take notice. Yes. Yes. Let's call it what it is. Every successful society that I have seen have a, uh, male head of household. You have, you know, your, your wife, you have your children, uh, the nuclear family What the Democrat party wants to push is something that's abnormal. You understand? Now, listen, I'm not God. I didn't create it that way, but God set it up where the man is the head of the household. He have his wife. He, they have the children. And that's what God set up. Anybody that's trying to do something outside with what God set up, well, you're going to have a problem. And this way you have this, what you have the modern woman problem today in America. And this is why marriage is tanking uh, in America. Marriage is going to become almost just about non-existent in America because men is just not going to tolerate you know, these, uh, the issues is going on and just call it what it is. The Democrat party has pushed everything that's so anti-family and men say no, because men are the gatekeepers of marriage. Men are. So men is saying, I'm not getting married for what, what in the world would I get married for? There's no benefit. Um, I get attacked as a man. If I'm trying to leave my household, that's attack. Everything is attacked. What's the point? You know, and I'm a firm believer. Listen, my grandfather said a long time ago to me, and I believe in this wholeheartedly as a man. And this should be a mantra for every man. If you can't run your house, what's the point of having one? And, and that's, and that is the truth. My grandfather said that to me a long time ago. And what was happening with a lot of men is that they pull in it. They said, listen, I'm going to have a household where I'm the leader. And we will, I'll respect my, my wife and respect my children and everything, but it has to be underneath my leadership. It has to be underneath the program that I set forth. You understand? And if, if you have any females that's going to be pushing against that, then say, okay, no problem. I'm just not going to be with you. I'm not going to marry you. And that's what's happening um, with, at least on the marriage tip. Now, continuing, um, it said that, uh, the Biden's White House release to promote the Build Back Better agenda this October is very similar to a slideshow produced by President Barack Obama's 2012 campaign 
featuring a fictional Julia Biden's Linda goes through life with a new democratic programs, helping her along the way. So we see Linda pregnant with her son, Leo, but Leo's father is not mentioned and say, we then see Linda benefit from the expanded child tax credit, government subsidized daycare and government run pre-K, but no man shares in their life. It is that his fathers didn't exist. Yes. Cause the Democrat uh, agenda is single motherhood. And let's give a bunch of programs to single mothers instead of let's bring the family together. We have the father in the household. Okay. Now they say, not only do these programs seem designed to make men irrelevant, many of them actually make it harder for men to marry the women in their lives. According to tax policy center, for example, it said a mother making 19,000 a year would lose almost a thousand dollars a year in expanded child tax credit benefits. If she were to get married and say the subsidized daycare and build back better also contains a steep benefit clip that punishes couples who tie the knot. Now they say Democrats may not care if mothers raise their children alone, um, it said, well, say this 3% of them say unmarried parents can raise children just as well as married couples, but reality is quite different. While many boys raised by single mothers do turn into fine men overall boys from single parent households are fair, far worse on average than boys raised in married households. And that is true. And your daughters too. We're not going to say boys, girls too. And say, even after controlling for income, boys raised by single mothers are more likely to get suspended in school, more likely to get arrested less likely to get a college uh, education and less likely to find a job than boys raised by married parents. Now boys need their fathers, ideally their own father, but research has shown that boys raised in neighborhoods where fathers are common do better than boys in neighborhoods where fathers are rare. Now they say it's continuing to say until Democrats are ready to admit that men cannot be replaced with government programs, that families need married fathers. Is it then is that we can expect more men to leave the party. And that's just so true. That is so true. We, we know even in our history in the black community is when these programs came in and it started promoting single parent households and penalizing, you know, married couples. Um, this is why we have 80 plus percent of our children in the black community right now. Uh, who are born into single parent households. And I mean, single parent households, I mean married because living together is not married. Okay. So you still is considered in a single position. And for me, from what I see in just studying the history of black people, um, I believe that we will get better the moment all these programs are taken away. Um, I'm looking at even during the pandemic, black people, had cr created more businesses than any other group. Why? Because every time that we're in our back is against the wall and we're in a horrible situation, we thrive in that more than any other group. Other groups fall apart. We thrive. And I believe that the worst thing ever happened to black America was these programs, um, that didn't encourage family. You understand it's so bad. And I don't really don't get into this conversation on this channel. I may talk more about, relationships and things like that on our, um, the Phil Scott show channel where it's kind of open to talk about those things. But you look at today, you know, with, um, I mean, I'm in one point in time as a man because of the Democrat party promotes all this, um, Hey, you can just go live it up, do whatever you want. Um, women these days, they'll lay down with a man on the first date and like, it ain't nothing at one point in time, you know, you'd be viewed at as a, um, a loose woman, but now shoot, that's normal. Um, and men see that. And, and, and since that has been the norm, why would a man marry you? Um, it's like, why would you buy the cow when you're getting the milk for free? I mean, that is a legitimate statement and that's into the psyche of men and men see that not only that particular party promotes that ideology or uh, that party controls Hollywood that promotes all kind of filth out there. That's, that's anti-family, anti-children, definitely anti, you know, black man, since we talk about black people, um, they, 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 uh, promote and want to put, um, you know, all the planned uh, parenthood, uh, clinics in, in our neighborhoods and make it easy, um, to get rid of children. I mean, all the things this party really push, you understand why would any black man with common sense and respect, be a part of a party that's so anti-family, so anti-black uh, man. And there's a lot of black women is actually waking up to that fact too. 
You understand? Um, now you notice even the women of, of I mean, they said Hispanic women, right? Well, they go on, they go on the same route actually as, uh, our community as well. The more and more you get on those programs, and say, I don't need a man and the programs are going to just, you know, suffice me. You go live, always live in poverty. You're going to be stuck with those children and you're not going to have a marriage. It's just not going to happen. You understand? And then with the advent of travel and, and, and passports and all of that, and then you get to see how, you know, other societies have a normal society, which I would say normal patriarchy society. Then why would they put up with that? You know what I'm saying? On top of the party, then the situation, like you say, with the modern women thing in America. Not when I say women, I'm talking about all. I'm not talking about one specific group when I say modern women. Um, because you look at the time period of my grandmother, right? Which was not that long ago. Uh, my aunts. I mean, night and day. I mean, those women in, the, in that time period, I see why they were married 30 and 40 years. I see why. Because they are nothing like what you see today. They're nothing like they wasn't full of tattoos. They wasn't cussing every five minutes. They wasn't drunk all over the place. They wasn't popping pills. They wasn't smoking weed. They wasn't doing any of that sort of thing. And then now you got this one particular party that promotes the debauchery. And, and, and then on top of that, you know, if a man do get married, I mean, look at the laws that set up in America as well. Look at the laws. I mean, with the no fault divorce, for instance, you know, a woman can leave you if she wants, you know, she don't have to you know, have a reason you could take half of your money. Um, you can be paying spouse support on top of that, depending on what state, if you're married 10 years, like California, you, you will be on the hook for spouse support to the day, um, that she decides to get married. So she don't want to never get married. Then you stuck on there for spouse support. Then look at the child support thing. I mean, men have really looked at the situation here in America and it's just not good. I mean, it, it is a, it is a, a contract that you're going to lose on. At the, at the at the end of it, if if one party decides to leave, and it's not um, something that's amicable, so men have seen all of this, you understand, and and, and men say no, we, we're not going to be a part of it, especially a lot of black men. You have some sort of decency and self respect, and matter of fact, I would tell black men uh, politically that I wouldn't even want to fool with a woman that that's hardcore Democrat party either. I wouldn't want to do that because obviously. Uh, those who believe in that, shoot, you know, I mean, y'all really want me to go there with how I feel about things now. You know, this this, this is me talking. Um, I would marry no woman if she told me that she going to keep her last name. You know what I mean by that? Is she going to uh, hyphenate her name and say, nope, I ain't marrying you? Mm -mm. Well, I can hyphenate my name. You sure can. You sure can. But not with me, you're not. You can, do, you can go marry some other man. I mean that. I'm like, look, did the Bible say you leave your father and mother and cleave into your husband? You take your husband's last name. What you mean you're going to hyphenate the name? Kind of, to me, that's rebellion. Hyphenating the name is rebellion, men. Now, some men they may not agree with me, but I'm old school. I'm like, why, why you don't want a woman that won't take your last name? That's a part of it, right? I mean, she don't want to take your last name. She want to hyphenate something. Well, so your, your name supposed to be uh, hyphenated to the side somewhere. You, you're not the man. You're not, she's not proud to be Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Williams, Mrs. Uh, uh, Jenkins, Mrs. Jones, or whoever your last name is. She ain't proud of that. She want to hyphenate it. No, nah, hell no. You know, but that's me. That's me, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but men, like I said, you got to have more and more self-respect. And as these elections go on, if they're not promoting something that's for the family, that's not something that's even for, um, and when we say for men, men have the concerns of the community, right? So I'm not about this dividing black men and black women politically. What I'm saying is that party has done that. That party has always promoted a divide in the black community. They have. They have, they, they've been, the, listen, they're the party that, that, can, uh, that's over CNN, understand CNN, not only here, but CNN international have promoted a bad image of black men and black women globally. You want to know why people in other countries try to say, oh, black Americans are this and black Americans are that they believe black American women are what you see on love and hip hop and brothers of something from some movie somewhere. It comes, it comes from Hollywood, which is controlled by the Democrats. And it comes from places like CNN. I'm telling y'all, I've been to these foreign countries. I've been on the airplanes. I see what they say about us. 
I've seen it. So that's why I'm reporting to you on that, that that party right there is the one that's done more damage to our global image than, than any other one. And now, of course I would say not the people that listen, not the regular, cause you the smart people, but the remedial people are going to come over and they're going to say, who's paying him? Is he getting paid by the Republicans? You know, because uh, we have a lot of remedial people in our, in our, our community, unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, um, we can't just stand on our own. We, we gotta, we gotta stay on the plantation of a Republican plantation or a Democrat plantation. That's what we gotta be on one, one way or another. Um, do some, do some Republican ideals align with what we talk about in the black community. Sure. Some of them do, but the party itself, it, no, it don't. Um, we have to be on our own and we make our decisions on who we side with politically based on uh, what we can get out the deal. If we get nothing that we don't, we don't do nothing. That's just bottom line. We just relax our nerves, save our gas money and, um, you know, uh, do whatever we're going to do. Right. Uh, we'll let, let them have it. That, that's what I say about it. Um, at this point, because if you're sitting up here and you, you having this, well, we got to participate. You, we got, we will be a sellout, you know? Oh, so they, you know, notice they say that, that, that you're selling out if, if you don't participate or you say, or you really selling out if you vote, um, Republican notice it's always, they always try to use some sort of emotional trigger with that. Um, either is shame, they use shame, they use fear. Um, they try to invoke ancestors. They don't even know who they're invoking, right? They can't even name the people that died half of the time. I'm going to say majority of the time they can't even name the people who died, right? Notice that it's always shame, fear, guilt, and invoking people who died in the past to try to keep you in line. Um, to be on the uh, uh, Democrat plantation. But see, one thing about black men, even the black church itself, black men have abandoned that in droves too, because we understand the hustle in the church. We also understand the hustle in the Democrat party, and it's not for the black family. And definitely not for sure the betterment of the men. Let's call it what it is. If black men are good, the community is good. You understand? If the men is destroyed in any community, it don't matter what community you come from. If the men are destroyed, the community is destroyed and, and, and a lot of sisters are waking up to that, you know, more and more are starting to wake up to that. Um, and how it's targeted to destroy the black man. You understand what I'm saying? The, the man is always going to be your backbone of any community. So that's why black men are public enemy. Number one, um, in America it is because if they can keep the black man down, they can keep the whole community down. Cause when the black man is thriving, the community is thriving. We have seen it throughout history, even in this country, when the black man is doing good and then the family, the black family is doing good. You understand? So, um, the brothers have it right. And I, and I asked the sisters to start following the brothers lead on walking away from the Democrat party and be in a position of black political independence, which is if you don't give me nothing, I don't participate in nothing. It's just that simple. You got to give me something now. I don't, I don't want no symbolism. Symbolism don't do, do crap for me. I need, we, we need some, you know, what we need, we don't have to keep repeating it. You know, what we need either give it to us or we, we good. We, we're not going to be Democrats. We're not going to be Republicans. We are just going to be black political independence. That's it. Sitting on the sideline. We'd be registered to vote. All of us be registered to vote. No problem. And we'd be ready to vote when you got something for us. Understand? We're not going to sit up here and just be participating in something. And then we watching everybody else getting a bag, everybody else getting protections. No, 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 no. Let those people, let me tell you all something else about that. Because I think somebody had called me one time and I had to look up the word was, I never heard it before. They called me a, a accelerationist and, uh, basically someone that wants, uh, 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 a quick confrontation and the end with massive social change. You doggone right. I want that. I want that because you know what? If they take away all these so-called programs and all these so-called protections away from black folk, you know, you know, the first people that's going to run away from America, those immigrant groups, cause they depend on those programs way more than black people do as first and foremost. Um, I know my people will thrive 
regardless of, of a program. I know they will. Cause I know my people. I know what you're capable of. Um, I know we'd do so much better. We didn't have all these programs and, and, and set aside and things like that, because when we forced to do something, we get on code real quick and do it. These other groups. No, they, they, they cause remember they, they have a, a mentality of, of running away from a problem. We don't, we never had a, a, a issue of running away from a problem. It don't matter where they come from either. I'm not pointing any particular group. More of them run from South of the border than, than, than from the Caribbean and from the African countries. I could tell you that. I mean, they flood in this country. And they do, and they they demand to be here and demand to get resources. Let those set asides get taken away by the Republicans. They're already threatening to take away affirmative action with college admissions. And I think it was brother Great Black Shark had posted it by Clarence Thomas. Like, good, let them take it away. I hope they do. I said, because you know what? We need to go to the HBCUs and we need to build up those universities as a community. That's what we need to do. We need, we don't need to be going to these predominantly white institutions for what you're dealing with racism and all that. No. So maybe if you can't get in there, like talking about, um, we can actually start building, building our institutions and being better here. You understand? But black men, they understand we are, we understand the church and the Democrat party is not it. And this is why we don't really fool with now one of it. And I encourage every black man walk away from both. I'm not saying walk away from God because your relationship with God supposed to be every day. You understand? But that institution here is corrupt. The Democrat party is so anti family. I and mean, we all looked at the, the filth they promote in Hollywood, the music industry. You understand all the little Nas X things they promote all that. Think about that. That's that party right there. Only a silly black man at this point in the game would be would, would stick with that party. No, they 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 are so they are so evil against our community. On top of not doing nothing for us. But once again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on the podcast this morning. We greatly appreciate you joining us here. And it's your first time. Make sure you subscribe. That way, you know exactly when we post a new uh, podcast. Make sure you click that like button. So you know, just help us out with some likes. And if you enjoy the programming, you know, uh, donate to us. I mean, donating and helping us with a love offering uh, would definitely help us keep going and keeping the, the mics on and the mix going and the internet and everything else that we have going on with the podcast. Um, because we don't get big corporate sponsors and nothing like that. So we depend on wonderful listeners just like you. So, uh, we greatly appreciate you, you know, donating, you know, definitely this week or in the past. And we definitely thank you for listening and see you next time.